How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Blue Shifting and welcome back to Seabed, the most confusing story I think I've ever read. So, best I can think of right now, and it's not a great theory, three possible paths. <laughs> Number one, um, everything's in the happy-go-lucky slice of life type of thing I'm thinking of, and Sachiko's just having a bad day? But we're getting mounting evidence that that's not the case. Number two, Takako never existed, or at least she only existed for a little bit. Because we have someone who confirmed that Takako did exist when they were young. Maybe there was an accident when she was a child, and now Sachiko has always been living with this delusional character in her mind that for some reason other people interact with. And that kind of melds that problem which came up last freaking episode when a freaking work like like coworker suddenly just doesn't know who Takako is, <sighs> even though we've seen him talking to her. So that opens up the third door, which is none of this is real and everything is fake. And Sachiko is just a, a mental patient patient in a hospital, having wonderful daydreams in multiple layers that contradict each other. So, yeah, that's where we are now. Let's figure out what happens, because heck if I know. <laughs> I took a different route home today and decided to enter a small, rather lonely-looking bar. The place first piqued my curiosity about six months ago, but I had since forgotten all about it. There was a simple, rectangular-shaped liquor shelf behind the illuminated counter. The instructor interior was dimly lit. I could barely make out the face of the people sitting just two seats from me. Did it make you wait? I heard a voice from behind just as I finished ordering my highball. Narasaki sat down next to me. Alright, so this is the, the crazy lady person. Well, not she's not crazy, but she talks to people who are crazy. Hello. Hey, this seems like a nice place. You come here a lot? No, it's actually my first time here. Is that a highball? I guess I'll try out the same. I nodded and Narasaki ordered the same exact drink as I did. Do you drink a lot? Mm, only at parties or if I'm feeling really tired. Because your alcohol makes you not sleepy? I don't know. Or maybe it's just like a mood thing. Hmm. A glass identical to mine was placed in front of Narasaki. You're pretty early. Did you say you were didn't you say you were busy later lately? I canceled one of our commissions. Ah, I see. It was something Takako was supposed to do. Was she the only one capable of doing it or something? Yes. Hmm. Takako's been, uh, Takako's been quite odd ever since we were kids, right? Yeah, she sure has plenty of energy to spare. I'll give her that. Yes. She possesses a unique kind of sensitivity. No, I guess that's not putting it nice too nicely. You could say she's always looking into things from a different perspective compared to others. Well, she's pretty eccentric, is what I'm trying to say. Sure, nice. <laughs> Real roundabout way to do it. Eccentric. Narasaki parroted me. Oh. Gosh darn it, I mixed them up again. <sighs> okay. Okay, right. Try. I was in a good rhythm at first, and then I messed it up somewhere. Alright. I could tell there was something off about her back in elementary school, during our first art class. You know how, uh... Oh, uh, wait, what? You know how palettes have separate holes for primary colors? Well, she would first mix all of them together, then use almost random di uh, randomly diverted sets of colors from the mess. Hmm. Oh, this is Sachiko, uh, Sachiko probably was talking right now, honestly, because the other person is supposed to be listening. Gosh darn it, I'm still messing it up. Ugh, voice acting. Not getting a grade A today. Probably going to get a rating of C. I would always use the other colors I needed. For example, if I had to color leaves, I'd choose green, yellow, orange, perhaps some red to mix in with them, but before long, Takako would always be ahead of me. Our grades were pretty much the same, but the teacher would always pay more attention to her. On top of that, whenever we submitted our work for a competition, I'd always end up being up qualifying at best while she kept winning prizes. There was a time I almost started hating her for it. Yeah, okay, okay. I gotta admit, this is sounding a lot more like a, like a, like a, like a pretend friend, like a childhood imaginary friend, because she goofs around at work all the time, constantly distracting people. 
And yet she works incredibly fast. It does a lot of things really, really well. And is always winning the first prizes and everything. Like, that just seems suspicious. It doesn't, like, there's a disconnect there. I noticed it last time, but I, like, I commented on it because there are people who seem really random but are honestly efficient. It's very rare, but it happens. But this is starting to get to the point where it's really beyond, like, expectations. Like, it's just so bizarre. Oh, this is it's such a head trip. <sighs> Did her work look good from your perspective, too? Well, I don't think I could really call her extraordinarily good. But her work always seems to have something that catches your eye. Something... Yes. I didn't even realize that I'd already finished my glass. No, I saw your glass was empty as well. She ordered another cocktail. Do you know a lot about these kinds of drinks? Not really. I just remembered an elderly man who kept coming to our place. He'd always mention this one. The bartender put some ice in the glass and stirred it with a bar spoon, cooling it off. He then did away with the water that came from the melted ice and, sp and spit some. Uh, and split. Uh, sp sp what is that? Spilt? Spilt some out of the alcohol and Narasaki ordered into a measuring cup. Gosh darn it, why? Like, I literally looked at it and it was like I couldn't read all of a sudden. It was just like, I'm losing my mind. This thing's gonna suck my brain out. Oh my gosh. This might be the end of the channel. Buckle up. I, I don't know if I'll make it to the end. <laughs> I'm losing my ability to read. <laughs> Jeez. What the heck is wrong with me today? And measuring cup. Anyway, um, it was some sort of foreign liquor. I couldn't recognize from the label alone, but its golden hue reminded me of whiskey. Um, I'm I don't drink, so wouldn't if it's not if it's not whiskey, but it looks like whiskey. Wouldn't that be like a bourbon, maybe? I don't know if there's a difference or not. Maybe bourbon's a type of whiskey. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, he started with a bar spoon again and picked up the soda next. After pouring most of it in one go, he carefully added a few final drops. The ice cubes jostled about in the drink as the bartender stirred it, sending bubbles floating to the surface. It looked almost like some sort of chemistry experiment. Well, I mean, that's effectively what all cooking and I'm bartending effectively is. Chemistry. He then added a bit more alcohol to make the drink gain some color. As it took on a vivid golden hue, uh, the bartender plunged the bottle, uh, plugged the bottle with a confident air of perfection about him. And that made you insecure. Narasaki took out her glass, continuing her conversation. Yes, I suppose so. I see. I ordered another drink myself. I don't. I think you don't need to worry about your work. I'm not an expert on art and design or anything, but you should be fine. And why would you say that? Much like Takako had her own talents, you are also capable of things others can't imitate. Oh, and what would those be? No, I'm not sure how to put it, but I guess one could say that you're able to comprehend things at a base level. At their base level. Am I? Even supposing you're right, what use would that skill be like? What a skill like that be? Well, hang on, Sa uh, Sachiko. You're running a company. Freaking, well, assuming it's a real. <laughs> but you're definitely in charge. Like, that, be able to be a leader and like, coordinate everybody, that's important. With enough effort, you could accomplish the same things as Takako. You think? After all, you're the one, you're one tough gal. Few things in this world could phase you. With that, I can agree. Haha, <laughs> I see. Narasaki chuckle. Hmm. I think I'll try visiting your clinic this week. What day would you what day would be okay? Do you have any preferences? I ordered my third drink. I've got a no appointments on Wednesday so far. Then I'll drop by some uh, by some time before lunch. All right. After that, we discussed our past for a while, about the time we spent together in our kindergarten, and what we've both done since we parted ways. Narasaki kept jotting down some of the things I said. When I asked her about it, she said it contained hints for my diagnosis. Yeah. Okay. So part of me is thinking like like these conversations are like just when Narasaki comes to check on her like in her in her room. We had that weird tip, remember, where we were like she was like there, like she was visiting like like room like what was it double o eight or something? Uh, this is messed up. It's weird. I opened my eyes to see a sideways view of my room in a rectangular shaped alo uh, analog alarm clock. A white dog with loop ears was point was pointing at a few minutes before seven. 
I pushed the yellow button on the clock to stop the alarm from ringing. With my left eye still somewhat misty from being pushed against the pillow, I climbed out of bed and lifted the black uniform off the hanger. It sported a fairly dull design, which, with only its dark red scarf standing out. Okay, so the like, one is this one. I'm leaving. With that, I opened the main door. As I stepped outside, I spotted Takako waving at me near the gate, still wearing her summer uniform. Uh, when are we now? Morning! Oh, this sounds like it might be school, actually, with the uniform. Morning. I walked down the stone steps to the gate. As I looked closer, I realized that the knot of Takako's scarf, scarf blah, was slightly crooked to the right, and her bag, which should have contained the same books as mine, looked oddly thick and heavy. You're quite early today. The weather was so nice, it would have been a waste to sleep in. I see. Takago lined up next to me as I exited the gate and continued down the road. Well, they say that early, rising early benefits you th uh, you three you three mon. What? Wait, three mon? What? Hmm. How much yen is a mon? Oh, okay, so it's money. Takago looked at me. I don't know. I wonder how much it is. I read in a book that four thousand mon is one ri ryu. If you rise early 1,334 times, it amounts to one Ryu. One, one Ryu? Let's, I can't, I don't know who's talking right now. Okay, I'm guessing this is <laughs> the go. Uh, one Ryu? That sounds rich. It does. Aw, oh, the kitty! Aw, he looks kind of like my kitty. Well, he's, he's a solid gray on the back, not just spots, but still, it's very similar. As we passed by Rikuchi Park and reached the main road while chatting about late night music programs on TV and the movies we'd seen recently, we could finally see the school building just beyond the railroad crossing. We have a class representative meeting today, so you can leave without me. I passed the tract while telling that to Takako. Got it! Takako gave a curt answer. What? I, I need answers, please? Who made this? I need something. I'm just so lost. Uh, by the way, anybody who's making a visual novel in the future, just like, it would be so nice if I could just tell who was flippin' talking all this time. Uh, anyway, a few minutes after the bell signal at the end of school days, countless students filled the previously empty corridors. You have a class representative meeting after this, right? Yes. In that case, we'll be going home ahead. I'll be going home ahead of you. No, we'll be going over ahead of you. See you tomorrow. My classmates left the room. Left the classroom. What are you doing? I was talking to I addressed talking to Oh, I got the boys right. Yes! I addressed talking to She was ta taking her sweet time to clear her desk, awkwardly lagging behind even, everyone, even after everyone else had left. Got some time today, Sachi. Didn't I tell you about the class representative meeting? Oh, okay. With that, Takago picked up her bag and, sta and staggered out of the classroom. After giving the clock above the blackboard a quick glance, I pulled out my English textbook and, and some notes from my bag. That was really weird. When, I, would, I, I don't know. I ask her, like, why? <laughs> I placed them in the desk, and after turning the pages to the material we covered in class that day, I began translating one of the longer passages. The clock above the blackboard kept ticking away. As I finished my review and turned the page to start preparing for tomorrow's class, the classroom door opened. Our homeroom teacher, wearing a blue suit and sporting a short haircut, looked in my direction. You're the last one, right, Mizuno? Don't forget to lock the windows when you leave. Okay. Our homeroom teacher closed the door and continued down the corridor, his low heels clicking against the hard surface of the floor. Once he descended the stairs and could no longer be heard, I began hearing the ticking of the clock again. So when's this meeting she's supposed to go to? I said, like, what? I closed the windows and locked them. As I picked up my bag and was about to leave, I noticed a blue bucket filled with water in the corner of the classroom. What the? I turned the small blackboard, which was normally used for communication, saw the cleaning duty list where Nana was Takako's name was next to today's date. Ugh, oh, not again, not again. 
I sighed in the empty classroom, picked up the bucket, and continued to the corridor. Where I lo unloaded it into the sink. I picked up the dust cloth that was hung on the bucket and drenched it in tap water. After rubbing its dirty sides against each other, I squeezed the water out of it. Seeing how it was winter, the water itself felt cold as fresh snow, making me wince. I'll have to talk to her about this. I remembered how Takako awkwardly staggered out of the classroom. Yeah, that was weird. I returned to the classroom and placed the dust cloth back into the cleaning tool locker. I glanced at the classroom clock again and after hurriedly stuffing my writing utensils into the bag, continued to school building number four where the third year classrooms were. Hmm. Why? So many questions. As I descended the stairs, I ran to Takako at the exit of the second building. She was looking at her shoe locker and her arms crossed. After a few seconds, she reached out and slowly opened it. The next moment, her shoulders slumped. slumped. If utter disappointment had its own sound effect, I would have heard it just now. Well, I guess disappointment, I think, would be the sound from like, uh, like the, like the, like the bad sound from The Price is Right, the bump, bump, ba da, bum. You know, that's the, like the epitome of depressing sounds. <laughs> <clears throat> that's right. Today was your birthday. Hearing my voice made her turn toward me. Sachi. Her lips curled up into a happy smile. I'm sorry, but I've got nothing for you this year. No way! It took only a second for her smile to turn into an expression of despair. That would be really sad. <laughs> You're like your best friend forgot. Aww. Hmm. Come here. I walked closer, seizing her arm, and continued towards the exit. <clears throat> Where are we going? I'll give you something good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> I'm scared. We circle around the building and reach the desolate area behind it. I look around, briefly surveying the place. Okay. I took a step closer to closer to Takako. Woo. This made Takako jump a bit, after which she timidly closed her eyes. Oh, uh, okay. So this is like the beginnings of their relationship, I suppose. That's, that's not what I brought you here for. Aww. I tapped, I tapped her forehead with the palm and pointed at the ground below us. You can have this. Takuya looked down. Huh? What? Look. It's a four-leaf clover I found earlier. Wow. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> ah! Takako let out a beastly howl as she fell to her knees and inspected the clover. Ah, oh, but you, you can't pluck it, okay? Another howl reverberated across the yard as I stopped her. Jeez. I don't know. I found a 4 clover once. I picked it up. I actually, like, I kind of laminated it in tape. Like, just kind of put it down and laid it flat so you could see the, like, the leaves well and then covered it up with the tape, too. Oh, interesting. So, Foy Clover incident. Okay. Anyway, now we're here seeing. Was it Narasaki? Is that her name? Yeah, I think so. Is that where the name for your office comes from? Oh, uh, is that is that? Oh, that's what the Narasaki's asking because that was the name of the company that she started the the Forty Clover one. Sounds pretty trite, doesn't it? I like it. It rolls off the tongue pretty well, too. Narasaki, sitting on her chair in the clinic, kept taking notes as I talked. I absentmindedly regarded her right hand as she kept scribbling something on the paper even after I'd finished my story. Her speed was pretty incredible, yet her handwriting was meticulously clean and followed perfectly straight lines. On top of that, she glanced at the business card she held in her left hand. Her right, meanwhile, kept going at an unchanged pace. There was a period during middle school when we temporarily drifted apart, but soon enough we started talking on a daily basis again. I think that memory turned into something special for Takako. I see. And Narasaki, as it said Narasaki, she flipped him a business card around to have a look at its other side. Why did you want it, anyway? I just wanted to see it. Hmm, that's a pretty high quality paper you got, you're using there. The drawings of the clover look really cute, too. Our job is designing things like this. 
It would affect our business if our cards had ugly drawings on them. I see. I guess it's like the sign of a salesmaker a uh, sign maker shop. Hmm. <laughs> Mostly pretty old ones though. Narasaki left my business card on the empty space between the scattered papers and the medical records before fixing its position with her index and middle fingers. She then placed her index finger on the card. I could hear a faint sound of rain from the little window behind her. As I entered Narasaki's office, I saw the desk for medical examinations, two chairs, a hospital bed, and a medical cabinet. There were many medical books and all sorts of bottles on her relatively small shelf, seemingly in a complete disarray, yet organized enough they didn't give off a sense of untidiness at all. Perhaps there was a secret order to them all. Yeah, that's me. Secret order. It, it makes sense. Everything's where it should be. Just no one else would know. Can you remember exactly all when all this happened? During my first year in high school, I think. Narasaki wrote down Takio's birthday and placed a pen on her desk. She then turned around and let me know it was time to start the actual examination. Let me hear your symptoms first. Don't be afraid to tell me anything, and try to be as specific as possible. Oh, I can actually hear the rain in the background now. I told her everything I was aware of. First, I told her about the ringing in my ears. Although I'd already said most of what was the, what, what, what there was to say about that in the cafe. After that, I told her about the hallucinations. I'd never given her any concrete examples before, so this time I went into as much detail as possible when describing how I interacted with Takako at home or in the office. Narasaki kept taking notes in her medical chart as I spoke. As I kept recalling things on the fly, I occasionally had to stop and think about what, uh, whether a given event took place before or after Takako disappeared from the real world. Oh, that's an interesting way to phrase that. Disappeared from the real world. Oh, I guess I guess it actually does make sense because she is having hallucinations and she admits that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Did that really happen after Takako dis uh, disappeared? Narasaki seemed to have noticed as well, and made sure to question me about it. I answered honestly, saying that I wasn't quite sure certain. Then I told her about how I found out that Inukai had never actually met Takako. Yeah. <laughs> what the fetch? They were talking to each other! Narasaki nodded, and after a short pause, gave me a serious look. This might be a big problem. Okay. So you're saying this junior employee, Inukai, told you he's never met her. Yes. But I can remember seeing them working together. Uh, yeah. Now, here's another question. Is Inukai real? <laughs> In other words, one of you is wrong. Narasaki cocked her head to the side while crossing her arms and legs. She almost looked like a statue of the thinker. Gotta admit, putting my money on Inukai being the one who's right, because we know she's seeing things that aren't real. But Jang, it didn't look like he was lying to me. When did he join your company exactly? I got I got curious about that too and looked it up. Pulled out a copy of his resume from the bag I left out of the basket and handed it to Narasaki. Hmm, it says almost two years ago. The day on his resume was the start of the previous year, so it made sense to assume he started coming to the office within the following year. I waited for her next words. According to your memories, Takago disappeared last year, right? Yes. Hmm. In any case, I asked our other employees about it, and she I, I asked our other employee about it, and she remembered Takako. Fumi's been working with us since we established the place. I see. And it's been four years since then, right? Okay, so so we have someone who remembers Takako. Okay, we have a basis of sanity that has re-entered the picture. I can breathe again. <laughs> Gotta admit, this thing's captured me better than I thought it would. At the beginning, I was kind of like, okay, it seems pretty good, pretty good. Now it's like literally making me question my own sanity. Ugh. That's crazy. Alright, so it's been four years since then, right? Which makes it... Narasaki moved the books from the table and pulled out a brown printer paper from the drawer and drew an axis of time on it. Alright. Four years ago. Fumi Ujgar's disappearance slept in sometimes in here. Two years ago, Inukai. Disappearance we think was in there. And now we have now. Huh. That's weird. 
If your junior employee is correct, then Takago disappears sometime during this period. Narasaki pointed at the line marker four years uh, to two years ago. If you are correct, then she disappears sometime during this period. Next, she pointed at the period of time from two years ago with all the way to the present day. We have to figure this out first. I feel like my thoughts were going sluggish whenever I tried to think about it. Can you remember exactly when it happened from your perspective? Yes, it was last autumn. I felt like I'd almost been swimming in a, I, I felt like I'd been swimming in a pool when my water suddenly turned into mud. My thoughts simply wouldn't progress from A to B. We went on a trip like we always do. She suddenly disappeared in the middle of it. I managed to force that out at least. If you're not feeling well, we don't need to overdo it, but can you try remembering any details about her disappearance? Yes, please. I tried to recall our trip. Mmm, ow, oh, that hurts to look at. We were walking down a stone pavement, surrounded by buildings made from red brick. Takuya was saying something with her gaze fixed on the pamphlet map, but it was as though she was somewhere far away and I couldn't make out her voice at all. The scenery itself began to distort and eventually dispersed. The fetch? Thing. Okay, Sachi? Whoa, she come, like went blank. I heard Narasaki's voice. Huh? Do you feel sick? No, I'm okay. But it's like a part of my memories is covered by fog. I can't recall a thing. I see. But, what? but why? Why would I forget something that important? Sometimes you forget things precisely because they're important. Oh, Narasaki considered me for a long, for a few long moments, then turned back to her desk and began filling out her medical chart. Ooh, there's something buried down there. That's I I don't like it. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me? I think this is all. You haven't told me about the ring ringing in your ears as of late. Did it stop? Narasaki asked me about my anxiety-induced acoustic uh, hyperanthesia. Yeah, it hasn't been happening lately. Are you sure about that? Narasaki gave me a scrutinizing look. Um, it didn't completely go away. It still happens when roughly the same frequency, but now it seems like it's ringing somewhere far away. I no longer get the feeling that my eardrums are going to burst like I used to. Narasaki inhaled a deep breath and responded with a quick, I see, and exhaling it. After that, she began silently spinning her pen between her fingers, so I decided to ask her if there's anything she'd learned from our conversation. Yep, you're cracked like a vase. Oof. I can make a few education guesses, but I can't tell anything for sure until I examine you. What do you mean? What was this? I need to verify whether your symptoms are caused by physical or psychological factors. She told me that physical factors are usually described as endogenous, and psychological ones are psychogenic. Endogenic and psychogenic. Sorry, I read that. Igenic wrong. Oh, uh, no, it is endogenous. Weird. I'm going crazy. God, this is what this look good. So I need to separate them. I see. So you need to separate them. I see. Exactly. Let me go into a bit more detail. There are multiple things that can be ca the cause for hallucinations, ringing in the ears, dysmenia, such as drugs, brain damage, or schizophrenia. The treatment for any of these differs completely, so I first need to uh, 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 eludicate the cause. Eludicate's a good word. Eludicate is a good word. I see. I think I got it. I nodded, to which Narasaki responded with a nod of her own. <sighs> in that case, I'd like to go into a bit, uh, like to go in a bit more detail. Oh, or is that her? In that case, I'd like to go into a bit more detail. Do you still have time today? I checked my watch and, sa and said that I did. Okay, so that was her. Dang it. And I'll try and investigate the timing of Takigo's disappearance on my end as well. Good. Interesting. Ooh, ooh it's getting creepy. Narasaki took out a stethoscope from one of her drawers and used it to inspect my body for any unusual sounds. Are you getting enough sleep every night? I make sure to sleep at least six hours a night, no matter how busy I am. 
Well, I had to take off my shirt, but it's still kind of embarrassing to be seen like this by an actual acquaintance. You don't, you do, don't drink periodically, do you? I only ever drink at social gatherings. Have you been to any doctors for any other conditions recently? Not that I can think of. Hmm. You can put your shirt back on. Narasaki pulled the stethoscope away. After that, she made a quick made, made, made me take a written test. It was really easy. I had to do simple addition, write down today's date, and draw geometric forms that were given to me, amongst other things. I think I've actually taken one of those before. I don't remember why, but I had to do this for some reason. I think like, oh, oh, I know what it was. I uh, had a bit of a scare, though, like, they never told me how scary it was. I had to, like, learn about it later. Um, but I had uh, surgery on my knee after I had a really terrible accident on my bike. Um, and it was the first real surgery I'd ever been in. And so they put me, like, under, you know, put like, where the anesthesia puts you to sleep. Um, I, was, I went to sleep in the morning around, like, 10 o'clock. And I was supposed to wake up four hours later, so that would have been around 2 o'clock. Instead, I didn't gain consciousness until around 7.30 that night. I had a really strong reaction to the anesthetic, and um, it was to the point where they were really concerned because I just wasn't waking up, which is always probably the worst fear they ever have. Um, and then when I did wake up, I actually I had a hard time having, um, what do you call it, sympathetic breathing. Because normally there's a, the part of your brain that runs your, like, it's a sympathetic nervous system. It kind of controls, like, the basics of your body. Like, it makes your heart pump. It controls your, your, your breathing. Like, it's the stuff that you don't even think about that you just do to keep yourself alive. Although that stuff, specifically the breathing part, was not responding properly to the point where they had me hooked up to oxygen. And in order to stay conscious, I had to, to think and focus on breathing. Like, I had to, like force myself to be like breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe out and like if someone like a family member started talking to me and i started like trying to talk to them i would stop breathing <laughs> because i wouldn't be thinking about it and i would like kind of drift off and just kind of start blacking out and they'd like wake me up and like like breathe breathe and like i remember like it's the weird it was the weird feeling of like having like that dizziness and like like the vision fading and then i would breathe in my nose where the where the oxygen tubes were and, like take a big breath and suddenly it would clear out and my thoughts would kind of start working again it was pretty scary to be honest uh since then i've always had to tell them that i had a strong reaction to anesthetic so hopefully that's something that's kept me around <laughs> but <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> But yeah, so uh, after that, they had me take one of those tests just to make sure that everything was back in order. Ugh. It's a, uh, it's a psychoanalysis test. It's basically to, to make sure that you're not suffering from like... Because like, there's a point where like you can be having like issues with your, your brain, your memory, and your coordination, and your awareness. But you don't really know it because you're having problems with your brain, so you wouldn't know. And you can kind of function normally, and so they make you take that test just to make sure everything's hunky-dory. As I finished the test with a little hassle, Narasaki asked me if I wanted to take a blood test just in case. A, a blood test? You're gonna draw blood from me? Seeing how I wasn't as scared of needles as Takako, I agreed to the blood test, hoping it might help. Don't worry, I won't be able to read your memories from this or anything, said Narasaki with a smile as she drew my blood. If it helps all this, I wouldn't even mind. The procedure came at an end and I was, I was trying, uh, as, as I was trying to look away. Rather than pain, what I felt was more akin to my veins being lightly prodded by a finger. It appeared that Narasaki was good at drawing blood. After discarding the needle, she placed my blood on a silver rack. I made a brief sigh, prompting Narasaki to ask me if anything was wrong. I was seeing hallucinations, hearing sounds, and on top of it all, I had apparently had memory problems as well. If that wasn't enough to get one depressed, I don't know what was. Uh, I was just thinking about how my mind wasn't as strong as I thought it was. Narasaki made one of her unique chuckles, exhaling air in a single breath. Huh. What? What's so funny? I gave her an indignant look. You don't look that distraught, that's all. What makes you say that? I mean, if I, if I, if a sigh is the extent of your reaction, it might not be good at convincing it, but I'm genuinely worried, okay? It shows that you're still feeling fine enough to maintain a calm exterior. On top of that, you're trying to face this problem with a cool head. Most mental patients aren't even aware of their problems and only end up visiting a professional due to peer pressure. 
Compared to that, you not only recognize that something's off when you're experiencing, but you're trying to figure it out for yourself through the intellectual reasoning. In short, you're both tough and process an open and flexible mind. Can't say that makes me feel all that much better. Hmm. Well, you being the self-aware makes my job a lot easier, at least. Narasaki added with a smile. I hope you're treating this seriously. You shouldn't overthink things like this. I gave her a serious look, but she responded with her usual laid-back expression as if nothing of importance had happened. I can see a regular patch of light on her shoulder that filters through the small window behind her. Noticing my gaze, Narasaki looked at the window herself. The sound of rain abated, and now the faint window-shaped patch of light extended across the floor. Well, we finished the blood uh, we're finished the blood test and all, so I guess we might as well have a sip of coffee. Narasaki stood up and left the, con the consultation room. As I killed time, I was mindedly gazing at the picture stuck to the clipboards on her desk, and Arasaki returned with two cups of coffee in hand. She placed one in front of me and kept the other in her hand as she sat down. With her left hand freed, she put the pocket of her white co she put it in the pocket of her white coat while using the right to take a sip from her cup. I reached out to my cup as well. Did I help you calm down a little? Narasaki posed the question to me as if I just finished about ha as I as I had finished about half my coffee. A little. I don't think we've solved much of anything yet, though. With these kinds of problems, just confiding in someone can help a lot. One's frame of mind is all that matters. She and one's frame of mind is all that matters. She added. I had to admit, it made me feel better that she was acting so confident. I suppose I do feel a little less stressed now. Narsaki grinned. What are we going to do from now on? Well, for starters, I heard you out. Now I'll have to look through the results of your examination to be able to tell exactly what's going on and what the causes are. Then I can come up with the best solution for you. She would make it clear if the problem was what, what it clear what the problem was before we tackled this head on. I'll take care of all the complicated stuff, so you should just relax and give me some time. Alright. As I've told you, if you come here, I'll see this thing through to the end, or at least until you're satisfied. Okay. Don't worry about it too much for now. Well, that's promising. <sighs> I feel exhausted. <laughs> As our appointment drew to a close, Narasaki told me so that this was just a preliminary check. After deciding on the time for my next visit and indulging in some small talk, I left the clinic. Whew! That was intense. Hmm. Now, so... Okay, actually, this is leaving the clinic. I'm going to keep going for a second. I thought this was a good place to end because I thought I was going to do a scene change, but let's keep going. The sun shone brightly in the sky as I left the clinic. I wouldn't have been surprised to see a rainbow as well. I didn't dislike the smell of wet asphalt. I looked at the taxi parked in front of the pharmacy, but quickly averted my gaze before the driver could make eye contact. Another taxi drove to the clinic. I wasn't really knowledgeable about this area, but I felt that my office shouldn't have been that far from it. After thinking for a few moments, I decided to go on foot. As I expected, after moving north a few blocks, I found myself on a familiar street. Relieved, I continued walking, thinking back to my conversation with Narasaki. Hallucinations ringing in the ears and dementia did sound pretty depressing. However, as Narasaki said, I didn't feel that anxious or confused about it. At least you're self-aware. I recalled what she told me. I say it's pretty important to get the full picture. I realized I'd walked into a shadow. Raising my face, I stopped just a moment before bumping into a street sign. The last time I actually hit a street sign with my face was still in elementary school. Takago, however, kept telling me how it was a bad habit of mine to completely lose sight of my surroundings when I had something on my mind. I realized I was standing in front of a library. I checked my wristwatch. I saw some time before work. Library, interesting. Psychology was in a different section from medicine, so it was a pain to find it. However, before I could spot an I I idling library worker, I found myself on front of a shelf with these kinds of books. I randomly picked one up and opened it. It seemed to be a dictionary dealing with terms of clinical psychology. I read through a few random pages until my eyes stopped on something. Catharsis. A method of treatment that makes, uh, makes repressed memories resurface in order to avoid an explosive buildup. Making repressed memories resurface. 
According to the definition I was aware of, the word referred to the pur purification of emotions. However, in the context of psychology, it also seemed to relate to what Narasaki was talking about, understanding the whole picture. I closed the book and considered the shelf again. In the end, I chose two books and brought them to the counter. As I left the psychology section, I stopped, wondering if I should perhaps borrow some other books, mostly for recreational reading. The librarian behind the counter noticed me lingering around. Oh, who's that? Over here, please. The librarian was a woman of short stature who held her head, whose head barely reached my shoulders. I checked the floor behind the counter. It was the same height as the floor on my side. Do you happen to have a membership card? She addressed me in a slightly high-pitched tone. Oh, I better change that. No. Is this your first time visiting? Yes. I'll prepare a card for you then. Can you fill out this form here? She placed a piece of paper and pen in front of me. I wrote down my name and contact information. How long will this take? Oh, I, how long will this take? I handed her the form and glanced at the clock on the counter. Just a few minutes. Her reply was quick and cured. I wish she was more specific, but I noted, nodded and decided to wait. I placed three books on the counter, and the librarian scanned the covers with a barcode reader. I heard three beeps. She picked up the card that came out of the machine beyond the counter and gave a final check, then handed it to me. Here you go, your library card. It really didn't take long. I picked it up along with my three books. Now is there going to be something weird on the card? I was almost trying to set as I left the library. Wait, what? I thought she was going to work today. This time I had to straight for the office, but it was as if, it, but it, but as if it was slightly further than I expected. I ended up arriving late. What the heck? Why is she going so late? Okay. Oh, I still. I can keep going. <laughs> I want something to happen. Now we're on with the clock above the entrance was pointing at the number five when I finally reached the office building. Ugh. Stairs. As I began ascending the staircase, I heard footsteps from someone coming down. Oh, Inukai. Hello. On your way home? Hello. Hello. I'm leaving on time today. What about Fumi? She's still in the office. She said she wanted to talk to you about something. I see. Well, I'll be going then. Oh, okay. Well, I'll be going then. Off he goes. Alright, see you tomorrow. I reached the floor where our office was located, continued down the corridor, and stopped in front of the door. As if jolted by static electricity, my hand suddenly stopped right before touching the doorknob. I simply shook my head and stepped inside. Okay. Alright, Fumi, what secrets can you reveal? I'm back. Oh, hey there. Fumi replied right away. I turned toward the direction of her voice and saw her bustling, busily writing something at her desk. There was no one else in the office. Fumi was the only one present. I walked to the whiteboard, turned my magnet upside down, and erased the brief note detailing my reason for my absence. Oh, it says here that Inukai is still in the office. He forgot this magnet again. I'll have a chat with him tomorrow. I turned to Inukai's magnet upside down. According to this, Fumi and I were in the, off were in the office while Inukai and Anne were gone. As I returned to my desk, I spotted some new papers on my document tray. Ah, I've taken the receipts and application, so I left the bills in your tray. I see. Thanks. I turned on my PC, prompting lines of letters to appear on the black background of the monitor. I stood up and looked through the wrists of the papers and the machine booted up. A few drafts of the commission I'd placed in the tray myself, attendance records, and year-end vacation applications. Does this schedule work for you? They had extra days off in the end of the year, but fewer days in the beginning. We had a few. We had fewer offers next year, so I had to agree to some to uh, to some extra challenge jobs. Ah, oh, yes. No problems on my end. Fumi straightened her back as she turned around to answer. Oh, that was Fumi. Dang it. I mean, all this changes that our vacation starts earlier. You visit your family at home during the holidays, right? I imagine you might not be able to meet everyone if vacation time keeps shifting. I don't have anyone special I'd be dying to meet anyway. 
Don't make me sound all loud. Je say me out loud, jeez. So then change the topic by complaining about how it was cold in the office. I'm sorry. If you can finish your current commission early, you're free to start your vacation right then. My, my, this sounds like an awfully attractive proposal. The opposite holds true as well, though. <laughs> I should have known. I'll do my best. I copied the important parts from the papers into my computer once I finished booting up. Come on, Fumi, tell me something. I opened the schedule file and entered Fumi and Inukai's schedules. Oh, no. Hmm, our vacation's unusually long this year, isn't it? I continued typing away at the keyboard. We should take another trip together. I prefer a place that's warm at this time of year. Or that her. I prefer a place that's warm this time of year. What about the Mediterranean Sea? I missed my chance to swim in it last time. I heard you can't swim past it in it past October. Then we should go to the tropical island again. As I recall. As I recall, that starlight tropical sky in my mind's eye, another voice from up close interrupted my thoughts. Um, my Sachiko? What? I was startled, but I didn't jump. And instead of continuing with, my, and, and, and continue, continued with fake calmness. Is something the matter? You seem to be talking to yourself there. It's nothing. Pain to mind. So she was talking. Okay then. She bought me some tea. Thanks. If you don't have anything else for me, I'll leave by seven tonight. All right, go ahead. Fumi returned the tea tray to the kitchen and focused on her work. Um, would you like to have dinner together? Fumi addressed me. Sounds lovely, but I can't. There's something I need to finish. I see. Let's go some other time. Sure thing. Fumi left the office at seven, like she said, after killing some time, so we wouldn't run into each other. I followed suit. Weird. This is. Man, I don't know what's going on. I want to find out. Dang it. So now what do we do? <laughs> I feel like the big trouble is it like she's suppressing her memories. I feel like something terrible must have happened to Takako, and I wonder if Sachiko feels like it was her fault somehow. Red brick in a, in a road. I'm trying to think of a place I know that has red brick. <sighs> Could that be somewhere in like um, Central America? I know that they have a lot of like Adobe style, but it not. I don't feel like those buildings are the kind you build out of brick, though. Red brick. Red brick. I guess technically red brick could describe anything, like North, like New York, like New York or Chicago, or anything else, really. Hmm. Hopefully what will happen is that we get more information, we'll find out where they were vacationing, and that'll help clarify some of the pictures. <sighs> I'm a little scared to find out what's going on, but I really need to know. Dang it, it's like making me, it's driving me crazy. But anyway. That's all for today. It's been a longer episode, but that's fine. That's the way it usually goes. You know, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for joining me for this uh, episode. This is really—I think we're finally starting to figure out like what the mysteries really are, and now I'm like dying to figure out what's gonna happen next. Who? This one really got me. It got me better than I thought it would. So let's find out hopefully soon what Sachiko's going through and what's really happening to her mind. Hopefully it's nothing too terrible, and hopefully nothing terrible happened to Takiko. I kind of think I'd rather her be alive and just run off. Then the alternative. But that's a depressing thought. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for spending time with me on the channel. It's it's so nice to have you here, especially for these smaller ones. It's just awesome. And I'd love to hear your thoughts about this episode. I mean, do you think she's crazy? Well, I guess she's kind of is definably crazy. But like like I don't know like how cra how like absurd is it really like. Have you ever experienced anything kind of crazy or out of the ordinary? Like I've said before, I've had hallucinations when I've gotten really sick before. And if you've had those experiences, I'd be curious to know at least like a little bit about what happened for you. Hopefully it wasn't too crazy or too personal, obviously. <laughs> don't share if you don't want to. 
But anyway, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being a part of the channel and for sharing this experience with me and this great story. And until the next video, watch with me or whatever you see me in next. I'll see you there.